Welcome back to the Algarve. Now, if you're a regular follower of the channel, then you may know that I've just sold my 2021 Triumph Trident and I'm waiting for the arrival of my next bike in about a month's time. Coincidentally, my little Vision scooter spent the last week at the local Honda dealer for its annual service. So I found myself using the Grom for all my motorcycling needs of late. I never really intended it as a daily rider as witness the off-road tyres I had fitted from new, but the past week has seen me using it on normal roads like this, where I guess most owners will ride in fact, so I thought that in typical YouTuber fashion now would be a good time to run through the top 5 things I love and hate about this little bike. Before I start, can I point out that all my comments here have to be taken in context. This is an affordable, fun little bike that shouldn't be taken too seriously. If you're looking, for example, for a commuter bike, then there are better full-size 125s out there, just as there are more suitable motorbikes for off-roading, touring, track days, or enjoying the twisties. As you know, uh, if, I've, if you followed my previous videos, I personally bought the Grom to load into the back of my van mobile office and take up into the Algarve Hills to enjoy on the dirt tracks and while I recognize that this is a pretty specific usage last week's riding on these normal roads has revealed quite a bit about this engaging little bike. So just as they teach you in business school let's start off with the negatives so as to conclude on the positives. Number one in my list of pet peeves has to be the brakes. In standard guise, they are the very definition of wooden feeling. They do stop the bike eventually, but the tiny discs and even tinier calipers need a mighty squeeze on the brake lever to show any effectiveness. I suppose this isn't surprising because Honda build these bikes down to a price, of course, and while the Grom does only weigh 100 kilos, as soon as you stick a big rider on top like me, you're basically doubling the overall weight that you're trying to bring to a halt. I remember the brakes on my 2018 Monkey were exactly the same though and I did manage to improve things by fitting some EBC sintered pads so I should maybe look at doing this on the Grom too. On the sort of gravel track I usually take my Grom on of course, less bite from the brakes is actually an advantage as too much will have you locking up the wheels or flying over the handlebars but for road use like this some meteor brakes would be nice and this is probably the bike's biggest downside for me. Number two on the list is the lack of road presence the Grom offers. Now I know I can't have it both ways. I like the compactness of the bike when I'm loading it into my van, but on busier roads I do feel quite vulnerable, especially as there's not much power available to get me out of trouble should I need it. The small size also makes me wonder about theft, which isn't really a problem in Portugal, but it certainly looks as though the bike would be relatively easy to pick up uh, by a couple of men and we know that it fits easily into the back of a van because well that's what I bought mine for. Number three the suspension as I mentioned in my previous videos it's almost as if Honda have set the bike up to be ridden by children or the more svelte Asian adult at least because fork dive under even mild braking with my 85 kilos to contend with is impressive. The Rear shock is similarly underdamped, and on the rare occasion that I've carried Rocket Lady as a pillion, we're almost constantly on the bump stop. Now, I get the need for cheap components. Many manufacturers try to save a few euros in what are essentially invisible components, but I really don't think increasing the rating on these springs would be that expensive, and it's certainly something I think Honda should consider, particularly for the European and US markets. Again, it's something that can be addressed with aftermarket kits, but if Honda could just have spent a few, more, a few more euros here, it would have helped a lot. Number four, something you can't do much about, although many courageous owners try, is the power of the engine. Now, it doesn't bother me, to be honest. I knew what I was buying into, and off-road power is less important, but on the road, you do need to remember that there's not much left realistically after about 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour, I wanted to see if there really was a third digit on the speedometer, just out of curiosity, so I have pushed it over 100 kilometers an hour, not miles, 
um, but that was downhill with a tailwind if I remember. It will do these higher speeds but you need a long run up especially when you've got the extra drag of off-road tyres as I have. It's not a problem for me, I have other bikes if I want to go fast but a motorway or dual carriageway mile muncher the Grom is not. Finally number five on my list of negatives I suppose would have to be the lack of practicality. Of course it's very easy to park being so small and it's great in traffic for the same reason it's just that you can't really carry anything. Now there are luggage solutions I've seen rack and bungee net and top boxes for example but these generally look even worse on the Grom than they do on full-size bikes. This might sound superficial but I would argue that Groms are often bought for the way they look so if you then put something like this on it, you're somewhat defeating the object. Incidentally, regarding looks, this new generation has sparked uh, controversy amongst the Gromites. I personally wouldn't say the latest generation of the Grom is particularly handsome. I think the second generation has it beaten in the looks department, but I don't think it's ugly either. Um, talking about luggage, I have managed to find this small bag that fits into the cutout in the stock handlebars perfectly link in the description below if you're interested but this was actually a bag that's been designed for a child's bicycle and is so small that it's permanently full of my riding essentials essentials like a multi-tool puncture repair kit sunglasses face mask etc so i can't really use it to carry anything a backpack i think is probably the least worst solution if you're considering commuting on a Grom. Anyway, it's by no means all doom and gloom as you might be thinking, uh, so let's finish with the positives. Fortunately, at least in my view, these outweigh the negatives, but I promised five of each in the thumbnail and title, so here we go. Number one, Honda's legendary fit and finish. Now, I did consider the Benelli TNT 125, and I know it's considerably cheap in the Grom, but I just couldn't take the poor fit and finish and feel of the components. The Grom belies its low price point really and while it isn't quite on a par with other top-notch manufacturers like Triumph or Ducati, quality is generally very good. The switch gear works as it should, feels robust and the dash updated for the 2021 model is legible in all conditions unlike the CB500X I tried the other day and displays all the information you could need including speed and revs of course but also a clock average and instant fuel consumption and a gear indicator. Number two on my positives list is the size. Now I know I've just criticized the bike for this for not giving enough road presence and I'm aware that I can't have it always but the compact dimensions of the Grom are a real delight in town for nipping through the traffic and when it comes to parking and for places like this the Villa Mora Marina which is usually thronging with tourists its diminutive size means that people smile at you as you pass rather than glare at you for ruining the peace and quiet. The very low seat height means that I can almost walk straight onto the bike from behind without having to swing my leg over as I do on a full-size bike and maneuvering in the garage is very straightforward. Finally, although perhaps less relevant to many owners, its dimensions make it ideal off-road, at least for me. When I say off-road, of course, I'm not talking about crossing the Sahara or scrambling over rocks. But for the green laning I do in hills locally, it's great. If I begin to slip or slide a bit, I just put my feet down and hold the bike between my knees. In all honesty, every time I ride the Grom, part of me is thinking, why aren't all bikes this size? People tolerate it much more than they would a full-size bike, and I feel more comfortable riding around this marina or parking up at a beach bar than I would, for example, on a hulking great GS. I know it's too small, the 12-inch wheels especially, to envisage cross-continent road trips but when I encounter someone on a big adventure bike coming the other way their head seven feet off the ground I can't help thinking that bikes have become unnecessarily I might even say absurdly large these days. Number three would have to be the overall comfort now this might come as a surprise but here the soft suspension I criticized earlier is actually a bonus as long as you're not pushing on too vigorously, the ride is remarkably plush for such a small bike. And as well as being low, the seat is quite long and flat, at least on the 2021 model, which means that it's very easy to slide backwards while riding to stretch your legs a bit more. The bars are also placed ideally for me and the overall riding position is a lot less cramped than you might imagine. I'm six foot two or 187 centimeters, so well above average height 
but the Grom doesn't feel any more cramped than full-size Naked like the Trident or the Speed Twin. Number four on the list is the cost. The Grom costs about $3,500-$4,000 pounds euros so is relatively affordable and once you've bought it you should find it will hold its value pretty well as these are sought after bikes. Insurance is similarly accessible. I'm in my 50s so insurance is no longer so much of a concern but even I was surprised to be quoted just 140 euros per year fully comprehensive. Servicing should be cheap too. I just got my Vision scooter service at the main dealer. That was 38 euros compared to the 150 euros I paid just a few weeks previously for the first service on my Triumph Trident. Finally, fuel costs are frankly so low as to be neg negligible. I haven't reset the computer since I bought the Grom and I've averaged a somewhat staggering 1.4 litres per 100 kilometres which equates to exactly 200 miles per gallon UK and 170 miles per gallon US. All the more remarkable in that the engine is brand new and I haven't been holding back using full throttle most of the time when accelerating. The fifth and final thing I love about the Grom, and this is perhaps the most subjective point and the most difficult to adequately convey, is just how much fun it is. You can genuinely enjoy this bike bimbling around at 30 kilometers an hour, be it on asphalt or up mountain trails. Quantifying or explaining fun is difficult and not very, well, fun, but the Grom brings as broad a smile to my face as the 180 horsepower speed triple I rode a few weeks ago does. Of course, it's an entirely different type of excitement, but as Einstein said, fun on a motorcycle is not riding fast, but riding flat out. James May from Top Gear always used to say this about his Fiat Panda, and I know exactly what he means. The Grom is the two-wheeled equivalent of the Fiat Panda. Terrible, really, in every quantifiable way, and yet so endearing and fun. Fun also to make your own. The Grom has been around since 2014, so plenty of time for the aftermarket to come up with ever more enticing accessories and add-ons, and it's only a matter of time before modifications become available for the latest generation. Unfortunately for us here in Europe, most of the aftermarket scene is focused around Asian suppliers, which makes importing stuff a little trickier, but there are a handful of specialised importers like Ben Harmon in the UK, who stocks the most popular stuff. I'm not really into heavily modifying my bikes though personally, so I'll probably just be swapping the rear shock for something more compatible with a fully grown adult and leave it at that. So there we are, my personal take on this oddity of the motorcycling world. As always, feel free to comment below. I answer most, if not all, comments. I'd love to hear your experiences on the Grom or the Monkey and if you've never tried one, rather than berating it, maybe stop by your Honda dealer one day and give it a whirl. It may change you for the better. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>